this Sunday the vote will be taking place. Now we all remember the Occupy Central protest movement, the veto of election reforms and other controversial issues that have dominated headlines in recent years. What is the current political environment in Hong Kong? Right now, Hong Kong people are prepared to see the results because most of us do not have the right to vote for this because this election committee has uh, around 1,200 people. And, uh, but the public opinion are divided. Uh, some of them are supporting the uh, top two, one of the top two candidates, uh, Carrie Lam, and uh, the other half supporting uh, Zhang Zheng. And uh, the public opinion polls by conducted by various institutions, uh, by the polling companies and by the uh, centers in universities, all indicate that uh, at now, Zhang Zheng has a higher approval rating and support by the public in those polls. But the uh, differences and, uh, uh, between him and uh, Carrie Lam is narrowing. And uh, we see the advertisement and we see the posters around the subway stations around Hong Kong. And we see uh, these candidates after two debates still uh, gain some points in those debates and uh, showed their capability. However, uh, no knockout yet. There is no absolute uh, kind of uh, landslide uh, situation that one will definitely win, uh, the other one will definitely lose. But many people mm -hmm. believed that since the majority of the election committee members are uh, so-called pro-Beijing, so pro-establishment, and uh, these people will vote for Carrie Lam. So uh, Carrie Lam seems to be in a better position or uh, having a better hand, uh, upper hand now. I think it is important for us to take a, a closer look at the election process and the system of Hong Kong. Uh, Professor Tian, according to Hong Kong's basic law, which is its uh, constitution, its chief executive is chosen by election committee of uh, 1,200 representatives, as we just said. Now, some people are saying this is not uh, a wholly democratic process. How is this election committee put together in the first place to represent uh, people from different walks of life in Hong Kong to a certain degree? Uh, okay, a little correction. Uh, 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 Hong Kong's uh, constitutional basis is not uh, just a basic law, but also uh, including the Chinese uh, constitution. Uh, and this is a good question. Uh, 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 this system uh, is uh, prescribed uh, uh, by a uh, basic law, and uh, it is uh, serves as a uh, common uh, basis uh, for a legislative council election and also the chief executive uh, election. And it uh, uh, has shown uh, it's a good. Uh, 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 it's, uh, it's, it's good uh, uh, effect on uh, the, uh, 20 uh, years uh, before. And it is also uh, this system is recommended by uh, the British Hong Kong colonial government uh, to Chinese government uh, in the legislative uh, uh, process of basic law. And uh, it view uh, Hong Kong as a, a special uh, society uh, to uh, protect uh, the industry and uh, uh, commercial uh, uh, interests uh, specially. And uh, it is uh, helpful to uh, keep Hong Kong's prosperity and stability. And also, the, uh, also this uh, system, uh, I think, is still have uh, some space for reforms. We can see uh, it is uh, more democratic in its uh, steps, uh, step by step. It uh, shows some uh, kind of conservative, uh, uh, conservative philosophy. It is just uh, a British style uh, to uh, promote a democratic process, uh, orderly and uh, orderly and uh, uh, gradually, and also uh, shows uh, uh, balanced uh, participation. So it is a rest in a system, or uh, of course, uh, it needs some space for uh, reforms. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chung, uh, how should we understand the election process of Hong Kong's leader as guaranteed by the basic law? I mean, under the British system until 1997, when, it was, when Hong Kong was handed back to China, there was no local election whatsoever. The governor of Hong Kong was always appointed from London. Uh, actually, the governor was appointed by uh, the authorities in London, but there were elections in Hong Kong uh, before the British left. They started this in late 1980s and uh, until early 1990s, they started to have certain uh, district elections being elected, uh, uh, legislators being elected by the local residents. Uh, however, the Legislative Council was not open to a large degree 
only a very handful of the legislators were elected by the local people by direct elections. And most of them were appointed by the governor. And after 1997, the basic law prescribed the new method. And that is uh, the de elections will be divided into, uh, the legislators will be divided into two groups. One is called the functional constituencies. That is, uh, each elector is elected by a group of people who represent a certain sector of the society. Mm -hmm. For instance, finance, real estate, uh, industry, exports, and uh, all these education, and so on. And the other half is by direct election. So we have five districts in Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong Island is one, and uh, Kowloon and uh, New Territory have each two of them. So five districts will elect these people. And in that process, the election actually has changed and uh, gradually being more democratic. There are more democratically directly elected uh, legislators than in the past, than before 1997 and before a few years ago. So this is the, uh, the road map which was prescribed by uh, the basic law. However, there are also the election of the chief executive, that is the successor to the British governor. And uh, the chief executive was also uh, chosen by the committees. In the first election, we have 400 uh, people in the committee mm -hmm. to choose C C uh, CH Tong, uh, Tong Chi Hua. And then we have 800 people. Now we have 1,200 people. But the basic law also said that eventually, Hong Kong will gradually moving to direct election. Mm -hmm. So we were on the road. And in, 19, uh, in 2014, we had the chance of uh, making this change. And uh, if the proposal by the SAR government, the Special Administrative Region government in Hong Kong, proposed that if that was approved, then this year we would have the direct election. Unfortunately, uh, that proposal died in the Legislative Council. So we did not have that chance to vote for the chief executive in the year 2017. Mm -hmm. Professor Tian, exactly following on that note, on August 31st, 2014, the Central Authority in Beijing decided uh, that by 2017 there could be universal suffrage in Hong Kong's chief executive election. But because of various reasons, we are not seeing a universal suffrage now. Is the decision still binding? What is the future development of Hong Kong's democracy in terms of uh, the selection, the election of the chief executive? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, in, in some sense, uh, uh, it failed uh, in uh, the uh, later political reforms about uh, uh, universal suffrage for chief executive. Uh, but uh, we think uh, 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 August uh, 24th decision uh, by Central Authority is uh, still uh, binding uh, in law and uh, uh, is also serves as a legal basis for uh, future rebuilding of Hong Kong uh, political reforms. Uh, and the uh, uh, Legislative Council is just uh, uh, vetoed uh, the, uh, the proposal uh, uh, by uh, the uh, government of Hong Kong. And uh, uh, we can see uh, uh, the uh, Central Authority's uh, decision uh, has absorbed some uh, uh, reasonable uh, elements uh, of uh, the older system. Uh, uh, in its nominating committee, uh, it is also elected uh, uh, based upon the functional, uh, functional uh, uh, constituency. And uh, the functional, functional constituency uh, has uh, different uh, representation uh, doctrine uh, uh, from uh, the uh, individual uh, based uh, one person or one vote. And we think uh, the future of Hong Kong's constitution uh, based upon uh, uh, basic law uh, we are, uh, will be a mixed regime. And uh, uh, a part of uh, a part of uh, the, the system will be uh, uh, functional or social based, and uh, part of the system will be individual based. And uh, it is uh, maybe uh, more uh, reasonable than uh, just a single one person one vote, because that uh, system uh, it, uh, will be radical. Uh, it may do harm to uh, Hong Kong's uh, rule of law, uh, Hong Kong's uh, social uh, pro uh, prosperity and uh, uh, stability. Also, uh, the central government uh, want uh, Hong Kong to uh, do a more uh, positive role in uh, national development and also its new economy. And uh, uh, the central uh, government also open uh, a greater strategy, like uh, one better one road. Uh, 
and also uh, Canton, uh, uh, Canton, Hong Kong, and Marco Greater Bay uh, plan uh, to Hong Kong uh, for uh, future development. We think uh, uh, maybe uh, after uh, this uh, CE election, Hong Kong will uh, face new opportunities uh, to its political development, economic development, uh, development mm -hmm. and also a uh, new uh, opportunity for its uh, basic law reforms. I will think uh, Hong Kong and uh, Beijing uh, will uh, do a common responsibility for uh, the new stage of one country, two systems. We can look forward for uh, it. Mm -hmm. Now, finally, Mr. Chong Siu, why, how should we, uh, the thorny issue of how to balance the one country, two systems approach is a tough one for Hong Kong's government. What is the biggest difficulty he or she would face once elected chief executive of Hong Kong SAR? I think there are several issues uh, the new chief executive must handle. Uh, as the criteria set forward by the central government, uh, there are four criteria. Number one is love China and love Hong Kong. And the second one is be able to govern, have the capability to govern Hong Kong as the, the chief executive. And the third one is to be trusted by the Chinese central authorities in Beijing. And the last one is to be supported by the Hong Kong government, the uh, Hong Kong people. So the last two are the very important criteria. The central government trusts you and gives you the blessing. That is the basic thing. Without that, the chief executive cannot function. And the, the other one is to be supported by the people in Hong Kong. There are several issues. The first one probably could be the economy. Uh, since 1977, 1997, the 20 years past, we have achieved a lot. However, the economic increase, the GDP increase, did not bring to the satisfaction to everyone. Mm -hmm. The rising tide did not lift all boats. Some of the people who were left behind, and that's why we have so many people who are frustrated, who are unhappy with this current situation. They want to make a change. So the chief executive should be able to lead the government to create wealth, but also create a much more fairer situation. The society should be fair to the people who are less fortunate, to the people who are left behind because of the changes in technology, in the economic sense, and other things. So this is probably the one of the major issues. The other one is try to make the people feel that they belong together. In the last several years, there are different opinions and different political opinions. So some friends become uh, unfriendly to each other because of their differences in political opinions. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the leader should be very, very strong to yeah. get everyone into this whole harmonious society.